Welcome, guys, to Rock and Rant number 32. What makes a guitar solo truly great and why most internet polls on the subject are completely clueless? Stick around. You're listening to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus, changing rock history one podcast at a time. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus, Rock and Rant number 32. My name is Lou Lombardi, a.k.a. Ludini. Our website is ludinirockandrollcircus.com. Please check back. Tons of cool stuff there. You can find it and discover it all for yourself at ludinirockandrollcircus.com. we got some folks hanging out with us live tonight, and I will tell you about how you can do that. Meet some really awesome people that love great guitar-driven rock almost as much as you do, and get access to exclusive music and exclusive video and all kind of cool stuff. And I'll tell you about that at the end. Stick around. So let's get into uh, today's topic, which is the guitar solo. Uh, I titled this, What Makes uh, a Great Guitar Solo, or maybe I should change it, What Makes a Guitar Solo Great? How about that? And why most internet polls are completely clueless. Now, the guitar solo has been a staple of rock and roll since the very beginning. Bill Haley and the Comets, Chuck Berry, Elvis, they've, there was guitar solos from the very beginning. It's sort of like part of what makes something rock and roll is a freaking guitar solo. <clears throat> now, what most internet polls base a great guitar solo on is tends to be kind of one, in my opinion, kind of one dimensional. Typically they pick a, somebody who's a famous guitar player and they pick some kind of solo with maybe some like tricky licks in it or something like that. Or maybe it's a really famous song that they maybe feel like influenced a lot of other guitar players, things like that. That's all cool. And that can definitely be part of it, but that's not really and I'm talking about the great solos. That's not really what makes a, a guitar solo like truly great. There's a lot of, there's, there's some eh solos out there, but there's a lot of really, really good ones too. But there are some that are just <clears throat> amazingly memorable. Okay. And I, we're going to come back to that word a little bit later on, but there are, um, let's talk a little bit about what, first of all, what kind of makes a great solo. First of all, it should add to the excitement of the song. It should take everything about the song and kind of speak that excitement of the song, that vibe of the song in that four, eight, 16 bars, sometimes 24 bars, whatever. It should, it should be like a microcosm of the feeling vibe and everything of that song in, in a single statement. That's really what it is. It's like another voice coming in, kind of saying, let me, let me summarize the song for you here. And that's what the guitar solo, that's kind of what it's functioning as. In, in that way, it's also making kind of a unique statement in the sense that it can kind of, it's kind of saying, I can do something with a guitar that's taking you all this time and all these other instruments to do. I can condense that for you with one instrument for, you know, four, six, eight, bars four sixteen eight but whatever bars to uh, i can do that in that short a period of time with one instrument so it is a very powerful thing now let's talk about the things that a guitar player absolutely must consider before he plays the solo now you may say well you know this solo is completely improvised or that solo is completely off the cuff but the guitar player that played those solos i guarantee even if he wasn't consciously thinking of these things has absorbed them in some way shape or form first of all as i mentioned earlier the complete vibe of the song is the song angry is the song happy is it a love song what is the overall vibe sometimes the vibe is complicated that's why we use the word vibe because you can't necessarily put it into one feeling so it's a vibe it's a it's a lot of different kind of things kind of coming together to create a vibe so the guitarist has to be in that vibe and know what that vibe is and be completely apart, absorbed in it the guitar should know the melody of the song and i believe that all the great guitar solos out there the truly great ones the guitarist really knows he knows that melody. She, he, she, excuse me. Um, we have to be, we're multicultural here. Um, uh, the bass line 
very important. The bass line is kind of the counterpoint to the melody. And if you're going to play a great solo, you've got to be aware of what's happening with the bass line as well as the melody, as well as the overall vibe. Of course, the chord changes. I know a lot of guitar players are probably jumping up to say the chord changes, say the chord changes. <laughs> yes, of course, the chord change is very, very important. And this is one that I think a lot of guitar players may, may not think of, but I think all the truly great solos that are out there have... The guitarist has a good understanding of the lyrical idea of the song and could say back to you in their own words what the story of the song is. Vibe, melody, bass line, chord changes, and lyrics. It's five things right there. I think that really all the guitarist has to consider in order if he's going to he or she's going to create a truly amazing solo now really ultimately what makes the solo ultimately amazing is the memorability the <laughs> how memorable it is. Uh, if the solo is very memorable, if the solo is such that if a cover band is going to play that song, the guitar player must absolutely play that solo or John Q. Public will not like the song. Those are the truly great guitar solos. The solos where the audience is kind of humming along to the solo. There's, um, I'll give you a few examples of solos like this. The solo to... Who's Crying Now by Journey. Shown solo, he shows in that solo that he's in tune with the vibe of the song, the melody, the lyrics. He understands the loneliness of the meaning of the song. That solo is just perfect. And when that solo comes on, you find yourself humming along, even with the little kind of licks and stuff he puts into it. It's absolutely perfectly composed, totally memorable, amazing solo. Not the most technically wonderful solo, not the fastest, there's not, you know, he's not playing behind his head or whatever. It's just a great, memorable piece of music. Just what I needed, Elliot Easton from the Cars, you can't play that song in a band and you have to play that solo. That goes, if he, he works with the chord changes and the bass line and the vibe of the song so perfectly well, I don't even know how you could think of anything else to play there. Hit Me With Your Best Shot by Pat Benatar. Neil Giraldo's solo is one of the most memorable solos of that entire era of rock. Again, You Shook Me All Night Long and um, Back in Black, excuse me. You Shook Me All Night Long and Back in Black by ACDC. Those, you know, and most of Angus's solos are, are like that. But those are two just off the top of my head. You're going to play in a bar. You got to play those solos because... People know those solos. They're like stuck in their heads. It's like if you people will be bombed out if you play like your own thing there. Even if you play something really cool, those solos are part of the song. And in my opinion, that's what takes a solo to the level of complete greatness. It is a piece of music in and of its own. I would be remiss if I didn't mention something. Uh, Kid Charlemagne by Steely Dan. That's another one. You know, but, but we could go on and on. I could, We could all list them, and you guys could probably have some of your own. I'm going to take a quick peek in the group real quick to see if we have uh, no no comments on it just, just at the moment. Um, so that's cool. But if you'd like to comment and you're watching live, I'd, I'd love to know what you have to say about it. But anyway, so that is my treatise on the guitar solo, what I believe makes a truly great guitar solo. And at the end of the day, it's memorable. It is a piece of music that almost practically stands on its own for its melodicism, understanding of the vibe of the song, integration with the chords and the bass line, and its ability to tell the story of the song in a sh very short space without even saying singing the actual lyrics. It's sung with the guitar. The truly great solos, that's what they do. I mentioned a, a second or two earlier about people uh, hanging out with us live and how you might be interested in some exclusive music and meeting some really cool people that love great guitar-driven rock almost as much as you do. You can find out more about that at lulombardirocks.com. This isn't your typical uh, squeeze page or capture page. I don't. It doesn't even require your email address. I just want you to come and hang out with us in our in our private Facebook group. And if you want to do anything else, we could talk about it once you get into the group. But a lot of cool stuff there. A lot of great people here who are really passionate about great guitar-driven rock. So you can do that at Lou uh, LouLombardiRocks.com. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me. What are your favorite solos? I hope that we can talk, have a great discussion about it. And I'll catch you guys all on the next Ludini Rock and Roll Circus.